So good morning and good afternoon and good evening, everyone. So Bertrand Tavernier from Thales, uh, I'm VP Software Technology in Thales Group. And just while introducing, I'm switching to my slides. So I hope everything is fine and you can see them. <laughs> okay. And, and so uh, I will start. So a so few words about Thales. So Thales is, uh, oh, sorry, sorry. I have forgotten something, which is bad from my side. <laughs> so a few words about Thales. So Thales is, is a 80,000 uh, employees company. And you can see here the Thales mission statements. Uh, Bertrand, just, uh, the only thing we see is you, not, not your slides. Okay. So make sure you're sharing your slides. Okay. Uh, I was supposed to, to do so. Um, I was supposed to. Okay. Is it correct right now? Can you see my, my screen? Yes, it looks like we can. Yes. Okay, perfect. Sorry for <laughs> for the start. So Thales is a, is a 80,000 uh, employees company and we are really, uh, so we are not a semiconductor company uh, and we, we are working in, I would say, in, in system design and solution design. And also we are working uh, in, in five different verticals. So we are working in avionics. Uh, we are working uh, in space domain. Uh, we are working in ground transportation, uh, in defense and in security. And uh, you can see here our mission statement, which directly refer to safety and security. And in the past, you will see that we, we were used to, to do safe systems and secure system. And more and more, and it's something which is important in uh, why we are interested in RISC-5 and why now for more than two years, we are more and more involved in RISC-5 ecosystem. And now pushing some RISC-5 cores in, in some, uh, I would say, early stage of, of product and system development. Um, it's, it's also because of, of the fact that now we have to, to mix both safety and security. And this is also a kind of game changer. Uh, so a few things about, about Thales. I, I, as, you, as you have seen, targeting five different verticals like uh, aerospace, like uh, space, like transportation, like uh, defense and security, uh, maybe you could think that there, there are not a lot of things in common between these five different verticals, but in fact, there are. Uh, what is in common is what we call the critical decision chain. These systems, uh, are made of, uh, I would say, sensor, and we are developing sensor, and we have a lot of, uh, I would say, uh, uh, specialists in physics. We have a Nobel Prize within Thales, which is sometimes uh, in physics, which is sometimes a little bit surprising, but uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, specialists in, in, in low-level physics, and we are developing very advanced sensors. Uh, we are also specialized in uh, data transmission and storage, and we are specialized in data processing and decision-making. And in fact, in all the system and all the verticals that I have listed, we can find this kind of critical decision chain. But of course, we are what is what is also very important is the fact that we are talking of mission critical systems. And typically, the kind of system Talesa are developing, uh, from the sensor to the decision, uh, are, are used in, in very critical systems. So typically, I think that we, we, so we are leader in what we call ATM, so uh, uh, aircraft transportation management, which means that uh, uh, we are typically uh, providing system which uh, help airport in managing uh, the, the traffic uh, in the air from the radars to uh, some sensors uh, to, uh, I would say, the system which help making decision. Uh, and, and this one includes a lot of very different points uh, from sensor, which can be real-time or very hard real-time because it has to follow the physique and you know the physique is not really agile. You, you have to adapt to it and you have a lot of constraint coming from physique and, and you have to deal with it. And then at the end, sorry, I will turn it definitely off. And then at the end, you have some 
cloud-based and data-based system like data analytics, you can have big data. And here you are really in the IT space and the, in the IT world. And, and here you, you have another kind of constraints. And in fact, all these systems uh, include end-to-end -end connectivity from the sensor to the decision. If we look to these two worlds, I would say that on, on, on the right of my critical chain, you have classical IT, so which is data critical, which is transactional, you have high throughput, you have data center, you can have edge computing, and this is really security critical. I mean, this is something quite classic that we, that we can find, uh, except that here we are managing very, very sensitive and very critical data. If you look to the left, the left used to be really safety critical operational technology, if I, if I name it, embedded technology. It has to be real-time, deterministic, power, size, weight, power, really constraints. It has a lot of domain-specific interface. Each vertical has its own domain. And you, have, you want to have system with no operation, if I think about cloud operation and people typically maintaining database like in any IT department, restarting the server and so on. You do not want that kind of server to have such operation. You want them to, to run without any operation. And by, by creating connectivity and creating that kind of critical decision chain from field to cloud, we can name it Internet of Critical Things, Internet, Industrial Internet of Things, or any kind of, of naming. What is happening is we start creating a continuous mixing the constraint between the safety and the security. I mean, remember on my, my first, my previous slide, you had the safety on the left, the security on the right. And here, by adding the connectivity, by adding a continue, by, by also adding, I would say, system functionality, which can sometimes combine processing, which can partially be on the cloud, uh, partially be on the gateway, partially be on the edge or in the embedded system, by creating, uh, I would say, a data continuity from the embedded to the cloud, you start mixing all the constraints. But these constraints are not lower than previously. They are even higher. I mean, in terms of security, it's even worse. And in terms of safety, of course, you can, you can never uh, compromise the safety. I mean, it's always safety first. So this is, this is a big problem, and we have to solve, to solve it. So and, and these two worlds, IT and OT, also need the other world. Because it's not uh, in the past, the, the technology were really clearly separated. And now, more and more, it's completely hybrid. If you take, a, 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 I would say, a, a mobile phone, a, a mobile phone is purely an hybrid system between typically a baseband, which can have real real-time constraints, and typically application, which which can really manage a lot of data. So why OT needs IT? Because of data analytics because typically uh, managing pre uh, predictive or preventive maintenance, making auto autonomous things required a lot of data analytics, a lot of machine learning and that kind of processing, first from the cloud and then uh, to the embedded or edge system or the OT system. It's also a question of software talent attractiveness. And honestly, it's sometimes hard, but these systems are critical. It's sometimes hard to attract the talent because students are, are coming from, I would say, great university with, uh, um, and they want to explore a lot of new technology. And here we are really entering into a world where safety first and this has a consequence. Um, but uh, I mean, uh, IT is a great source of inspiration for agility. Uh, and agility is not a question of developing in the cloud. When we look at RISC V, it's really a great source of inspiration for agility in embedded system development. And it's also, uh, I would say, a mindset of integration. Do not build it twice. Try to standardize. Try to share. Open source uh, typically is something which is uh, also pushing uh, a lot of a new way to design to design system and sometimes critical system. But IT world, non-critical world, open world also needs uh, OT knowledge. Uh, I have in mind the fact that uh, an operational technology, the fact that if we want to learn from data and learn from real data, first we have to capture real data. Uh, and also, uh, if, we, if we design in the cloud great thing, we want to act in the physical world because we are all living in the physical world and not the digital world. And doing that requires some safety. And, we, and the principle of safety are, are something which is, which is well known from the OT world. And also, 
power consumption is something which requires sometimes hardware software integration. And when you when you abstract too much the software, sometimes you lose that knowledge. So in, in a domain where you have a lot of hardware software integration, there are also good principles. I have in mind technology like FPGA as a service, for example, which introduce some FPGA in data center and which can also bring, I would say, uh, technology where you have to mix different kinds of knowledge. Um, one thing, I will be quick on that slide because I can talk about half an hour just on that slide. Um, safety and security can, can look the same. There are a lot of principles which are common, there are, but there are also things which are really different between safety and security. And that's the beginning of, of, of the, I would say, the nightmare sometimes. So as I, as I said, we need more and more to develop safe and secure systems. But when we look to safety and security side by side, there are things which are common. What is common? The fact that uh, we want it, we want the design software, hardware, system design to be lean because we want to provide confidence on different properties like the system will always do that or the system will never do that. Whatever you are in safety and security, you want to provide confidence about the fact that something will always happen or never happen. And the way you do that in high level software assurance is quite the same between safety and security. You analyze the fact that what you have implemented is what you want. You analyze the fact of what you do not want is not unintended or does not contain malicious function. And you, you try to find a way to provide a lot of determinism and a lot of partitioning between different functions. And you will see where I will go to, to, to risk five. But that's, that's something important and you are doing it the same way. And usually, in safe design, you remove anything you do not need, and especially in software, having some dead code or unreachable code from the software system point of view is something which is not allowed. The second thing is you have a lot of traceability in safety and security. You have a lot of compliance. You have a lot of process assurance. And you analyze, you have to analyze everything which is in your box and justify that everything which is in your box will not generate unintended or malicious effects. That's, that's something which is shared. What is completely different is the relationship to history of service. Safety really strongly rely on history of service, which means that something, when, when, you, when you enter into a plane, knowing that this plane has flight for thousands and thousands of hours without any issue is something which really matters. And this generates a kind of need of stability, a need of frozen configuration. For history of service, you need to record any time you use something. When you move to the security, you are in a world where you want to update as much as possible. And you are, and the way to maintain the system under a good security condition is not exactly the same than, uh, and, and, and completely resets history of service. Also, randomization is something that safety hates and security loves, which is completely required for security. And there are a lot of also differences, but I, I will not deep dive into it. So, this has an impact on architecture. The, the impact on architecture is the need for mixed criticality. Because if you try, because of this uh, aspect, which are completely opposite between safety and security, you can hardly have a system which, can, which will have at the same time a very uh, strong security pressure and a very strong safety pressure. So to do that, you need to separate your concerns between safety critical feature, between security critical feature, and more and more, we want to have system which are agile, which means that there is one part of the system which need to be updatable and sometimes over the air or remotely updatable, and we want it to be open and sometimes to have extensible service to provide customization to the customer. And so safe and secure hypervisor. So there is one uh, uh, interest which is named PyCOS, but you can find uh, other solution in the market. Uh, are, are, are a part of the solution. But software is not enough. It's like in security and safety that's the same. It's not a question of software, it's a question of system. And the question is what about computing? So that's where we drive into our, our problem, which make the, I would say, our interest in RISC-V. So 
Now, for years, end of more law is balanced by hardware optimization, which means that we cannot uh, stay in the generic domain and have at the same time um, less power consumption and, and more performance. So as a consequence, the solution has been to, to introduce hardware optimization. And the difficulty we have at this time is the fact that you remember the five markets that I have listed, they are niche markets. It's great niche, big niche. I mean, I would love that we sell as much as satellite as we sell smartphone, but that's not the case. And definitely, that's not the case. It's it's very, very, um, I would say, big system, very complex system, very expensive. Talisa is not expensive, but very advanced system. There is a lot of technology, but there is not a lot of, uh, of uh, I would say, uh, volume. And so we have an issue because as soon as we start introducing optimization, the, 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 the system, the, the, I would say, the computing become more uh, targeting, start to targeting some markets. And of course, the computing start targeting mass market and not necessarily niche market. The second thing is the fact that uh, hardware optimization is processor is not enough and more and more they are heterogeneous accelerator. This one do not have a clear programming model. And this also introduces some complexity. And also, this one are not necessarily adapted to our market. And of course, as soon as this object becomes more and more, I would say, um, complex with a lot of different use cases, it introduces a lot of software inside the hardware. It introduces complex BIOS, complex firmware. And you know, uh, in fact, when we have a certification, there is not a frontier between what you develop and what you use. You are responsible for everything, for any piece of software inside the system, inside the aircraft, inside the satellite. So I mean, if there is a firmware, you need to understand exactly what's inside and you need to justify that what's inside will not have side effect on your security model. And so at the end, what do we do? We, we, we take something which is not completely, which is the closest to our market. Typically, some the, the most safety critical automobile core, usually most of the time. And, and then we, we, we look at it. And then we look at it and we, and we uh, try to understand what's, what is it, try, try to justify that there are no interference, uh, try to uh, typically um, look at it, study it, under configure it. And so we, we usually at the end uh, use half of the silicon because there are a lot of accelerators that we cannot use or are not adapted to the use case. And then in the remaining half, we use half of the performance because if we want it to be deterministic, we, we need to configure it in a way we are sure we can justify worst case execution time, we can justify the rate run. And we also introduce complex monitoring in addition to that, just to be sure that uh, all the studies we made are, are, are correct. And even if there's something that we can detect, we can safely act. So Bertrand, we want yes. to try to, you got about five minutes. So okay. I just want to give you a time check there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but uh, um, so this is typically why we, uh, at the beginning, we, we, we start to pay attention to risk five. The question was not necessary to, uh, and we will not become, I would say, uh, a, a silicon, uh, I would say, a, semi, uh, a semiconductor company. That's really not now our target. But we wanted to explore some architecture in the design, transparent architecture, which would make our, our life easy as an integrator, a software and hardware developer, and as a tier one and as a safety critical system developer. So RIS-5 has a lot of very good properties for that. Uh, the first one is safety and security. The fact that it's, it's, it's a white box, it's a fully auditable processor. There is a lot of trust in terms of performance. Uh, it's compatible with a lot of our use case. In terms of swap and customization, it exactly fits I would say what, what we need and, and we can use only what we need. Uh, and also in terms of vendor locking, in terms of ecosystem, because it's not a question of silicon, it's a question of full ecosystem. It has all the good property we need. Of course, in the defense domain, uh, we, we have some sovereignty requirements and we, we need to be sure that when we select something, we can manage our fate. So in terms of, uh, by, by looking at that, uh, we, we are started, 
I would say, uh, being more and more involved in, in uh, open source hardware and especially RIS-5. And we are starting uh, creating architecture, defining specificity, which would help in mixing safety and security. And, and for that, we are now um, really active in two groups. So there is a SIG safety group in RIS-5 that we are leading with uh, and, and co-chairing with NVIDIA and on which we, we looked at, I would say, safe and secure architecture based on RIS-5 processor. And, and we looked at, uh, I would say, the consequence that this kind of architecture could have uh, in the standard or not, just to be sure that we can uh, easily um, configure and provide everything we need. And we are also really involved uh, in open hardware group. So in, uh, I would say, RIS-5 processor implementation, uh, where we are actively uh, contributing first to the 32-bit the and the 64-bit implementation uh, core 5 uh, coming from uh, Ariane and Risky, and on which we are providing, for, for example, the debug interface or really working in some product which will involve the, uh, this course. So if we look to uh, the, the current uh, um, activities that we have in Open Hardware Group, uh, so we, we have been a founding, I would say, uh, um, we, we have been uh, one of the initial members of uh, Open Hardware uh, Group uh, from, the, from the creation. And then we are, we are really starting moving from uh, looking at an initiative which makes sense for us to something where we contribute. And we have started with something which was quite easy for us, which was something that we have developed. It was the, the Pulpino debug interface that we have developed and that, that we have commit. And we have started working and being more and more involved uh, on the risky core uh, validation and verification, on the design, uh, I would say, the complete uh, verification tool and design flow setup that we are doing in open hardware. And more and more, we are also working in Ariane Core for FPGA. We have some great results on that. And also safe and security enabling feature that we are currently discussing and which are connected to the SIG safety uh, risk five working group. And uh, I, I will not uh, disclaim, uh, I will not uh, uh, provide it today, but there is a strong and major contribution, which is uh, quite unusual for us, which are not a semiconductor company and that not used to open source, but now more and more actor. There is a, what I think is a great contribution to come uh, on, uh, I would say, the Ariane uh, and uh, on IPA, uh, Open Hardware Group. It is something we'll communicate in the next month. In terms of use case, and this will be my last slide. Uh, in fact, uh, now we can see that. Uh, uh, we have we have roughly two major use cases up and running. I have removed all the name of the product because it's not completely something that I can share. But as soon as it will be possible, we will. So one which is uh, uh, a use case associated uh, in an ASIC use case, and another one which is a soft core use case uh, associated also to uh, safe and safety. Uh, uh, usage, even if uh, at, at this time we are more in the open world than the safety critical world, but, uh, but that's the first way to go and to, 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 to scale and to include uh, RIS-5 cord in safety, uh, safety critical system. And this is my last slide for this presentation.